Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, how are you guys doing? I'm here with my good friend, one of my best friends, Dr. Sabil, and alhamdulillah, we're going to be talking about what should be the primary mission. We all have missions in life, but as Muslims, we got a primary mission, and for the not yet Muslims out there who are tuning in, what's a Muslim? Muslim is one who has consciously submitted to the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth, the same creator that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind. They all call people to have a direct Connection with the one God, the creator of the heavens and earth. In Arabic, we say Allah. So what should be the primary mission of Muslims? Should it be relief, politics, social justice, which are all good causes, but should they be the primary destination, the primary goal and objective or dawah? Or is it all dawah? Dr. Sabil, to help us tackle this topic, we have you, Dr. Sabil, with us. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabi admayna mabad. Everyone, welcome again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah's peace, mercy and blessings be upon each single one of you. Brother Eddie, it's good to be here. Ramadan is almost done, but the topic that we have taken up is of immense importance. As you mentioned, Brother Eddie, almost every Muslim, almost every organization, every masjid, mashallah, doing excellent work. Some have taken up the work of relief, helping the orphans, the widows, you know, relief here, relief outside, you know, 67 countries or more. Some have entered the politics. You know, we say, fine, if you want to make an impact in the society, why not? 3,000 plus massages are being built, have been built in, in, in USA. 15% in the 50, in the last 15 years, 75% of the massages that we see right now, they have been built. The Muslim Ummah is investing our humongous resources in building massages. People are having uh, social justice causes. Some people are doing, uh, you know, chasing education. All of these things, I would say, excellent. When we pick up a copy of the Quran and the Sunnah, you will find every single one of them highlighted in the Quran and exhibited by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, however, we need to find out that should we be doing anything, all things and dedicating our life energy, our total time, our, you know, our passion, our mission, our, our resources in all of these things? Or is there something higher, greater that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has desired for the Muslims and the Muslim Ummah in general? But that mission, Brother Eddie, should not be based upon, you know, what I like, my emotions or the culture. It should, it should not be based upon, you know, the geopolitical situation, but it should be based upon the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you agree with that, Brother Eddie? Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously, you know, anything that we do, we need to find out what does the Quran says, what does the, uh, what does the Sunnah says. I mean, this is clear, this is, and this is something that many, many of times, even though we're Muslim, but a lot of times we forget that, order in the Quran, if you differ on anything, if you need clarity or if you need things cleared up, you go back, you turn it to, towards the ayah that specifically says, if you differ on anything, turn it back to Allah and his messenger. It's very straightforward and clear. Right. And then there is also one more Quranic ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah 33, ayah number 21. <laughs> And the translation is that in the person of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow for those who believe in Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much. Mm -hmm. So anything that we do, we need to go to the Quran and the authentic sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You know, before we define what, the, what should be the mission based upon the Quran and the sunnah, it is important for us to know that we are investing more money, more time in all of these resources. However, the situation of the Muslim Ummah not only is not improving, not only is not remaining the same, it is actually going down. It's getting worse, huh? It's getting worse. So what are, you, are, you, are you saying that now, to give an example, you have, let's say, a simple one, and we can go from there, where you have people who will say, okay, the reason we invest $100,000, $200,000 into a minaret is because now it's attractive and people are going to look at it and they'd be like, wow, you know, and maybe they'll accept Islam because of it. Is that, how do you, how do you um, perceive that kind of 
logic and that pretext as opposed as opposed to are you saying that taking that money and now instead of putting 200 100 300 thousand dollars into a minaret that can be what that can be spent more wisely into what educational programs into dawa yes yes definitely you know what i'm saying is that there are so many good things people are doing with good intentions and may Allah reward every single person. But we need to look at the prophetic life and see where did he used to invest his majority of the time, 99% of the time, as, as we can see. That is defined in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 143. Mm -hmm. And the Ayah continues, and the translation is this. Allah is saying that we have made you an ummah, justly balanced, that you become witnesses to humanity and the way the messenger of Allah was a witness over you. So that is the primary mission, Brother Eddie, defined in the Quran and practiced by Prophet Muhammad not just the last Prophet himself, every single Prophet, every single messenger, going all the way back to Prophet Adam himself. May that be Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Ishmael alayhi salam, Dawud alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and then followed by Prophet Muhammad. So but, they all, but they all did and called for charity. They were taking care of certain dilemmas in the community, calling for justice, social justice. They were doing many of these things. So how do you, when you're talking about, help us understand now and make it clear what we're trying to achieve here, where somebody is saying like, okay, if, if the Quran and Sunnah are full of examples of charity, of social justice, of humanitarian work, then uh, what's the, what is the goal here? The message that you're trying to deliver? Sure. You're 100% correct. When we look into the Quran and the Sunnah, surah after surah, verse after verse, page after page is filled with how should we get involved in the society, better the society? How should we take care of the poor, the needy, the homeless? All of these things, we should be doing it. But when we look into the prophetic life, where did he invest the majority of his time? What was the main mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him for? What kind of structured way that he did he form any groups in a structured way where did he invested his time so when we look into the prophetic life we we find out that 90 percent of the time maybe 99 percent of the time he used to connect humanity with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he never did any structured you know let's say relief work or social justice work or building the massages work yes he did all of them he motivated the sahaba they got motivated by the quran and the sunnah but if there is one area that his time, his energy, his resources were dedicated, it was nothing less than da'wah, which is connecting humanity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're not neglecting this, or should we not have people focus on this? But what you're saying is everything has become like, you have a quote where now it's, it's, we become like a charity, or the deen has become, or... Uh, like a charity organization, like just specifically all of the, and I don't want to misquote you, what was the quote that you, you said? Uh, so we're primary taking all of the resources, the majority is going to towards that where it should be opposite. It should be built on the primary objective of what he and all the other uh, prophets and messengers were sent. And then from there, you take off to implementing everything else. Is that correct? The mission has to be really clear. If the mission is not clear, that means we are going to chase after so many things which are good good things. Mm -hmm. So the clarity of the mission is defined in the Quran and the Sunnah. Clarity of the mission. That's So people can write that down. This is very important. The, the clarity of the mission has to be clear. You know, just like suppose if you enroll in a school, we, may ha we have the intention obviously to graduate, but to graduate, you have to take certain core classes, certain electives do certain assignments and quizzes and participation, attendance, all of them has to be there. 
But suppose if you make the mission itself to be in the school for the rest of your life, for example, then we would say, you know what? Fine, school is good, education is good, but that's not the destination. Relief is good, but that is not the destination of the Muslim Ummah based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. So relief, charity, humanitarian, that's all its all good. Nobody's denying that, but that's not the ultimate. Um, that's thats not the, the main objective. The main objective is what? To connect the hearts with their creator, to the purpose of life, to what all the other messengers call people to, the pure tawhid, the monotheism, and to build off that. Yes, brother Eddie. So here is a simple chart that I made, uh, you know, just a few days ago, just to help us in this. You know, before we go into this, it's important for us to know that Surah 16, Ayah 36 of the Quran mentions, and here is the translation, that Allah has appointed messengers to all the nations of the past and all the people of the past, and their mission was one. If we invite humanity to submission of the creator against the false gods that can be humans, that can be you know, animals, that can be the idols away from the false deities, but the worshipping of the of the true creator. That was the mission of every single prophet, every single messenger. So as we can see from here, as we can see from here, this is so important for us that if Muslims are over here, if you have to go towards a destination that it has to be clearly defined. Some people are entering politics, which is fine, which is good. You know, yesterday I was part of a oath taking ceremony of a Muslim sister over here. Two days ago, three days ago, there was a Muslim mayor, the first Muslim mayor in the state of Illinois. And we were excited. You know what? Now maybe some of the local laws would be more just not in favor of Muslims, but in favor of everyone, justice to everyone. So entering politics is good. But if a person says, you know what? That is going to be my mission in life itself, the whole life, just entering politics. That we would say, you know what? It has to align. It has to be connected towards connecting humanity with the creator himself. Some people, they invest in humanitarian efforts, relief efforts, the orphans, the widows, and the poor around us. We say, you know what? That's a good mission. Quran and the Sunnah are full of verse after verse, ayah after ayah of it. However, when you look into the realities right now, Brother Eddie, 90% of our resources of the Muslim Ummah goes towards either building of the massages or towards the relief efforts. But this is what I can say. The more that we invest in relief, the more we need to invest in relief. Did you get that? The more that we are doing relief, the more we have to do relief because relief is not going down. Actually, it's increasing because we are neglecting other important mission that Allah has given to us. Some people are into interfaith, for example, you know, just with the Catholics, with the Protestants, with the Mormons, with the Jehovah's Witness, with the, Christ with the Jewish people. And some organizations, some massages are doing it for literally you know, decades, I would say, if not centuries, literally decades in the USA. This is good. Interfaith is good. To educate them is good. To soften their hearts is good. But that was not the mission of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then really quickly, right? Some people are into social justice. Social justice is good. Amr bil maruf and nahin al munkar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah number 3, ayah number 110. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil marufi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. So social justice is good, but social justice was not the destination, the main mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So it's important. We are not saying that all of this we should not be doing. We should be doing all of them. Taking care of the neighbors is good, but that was not the mission of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He used to do it, you know, by default. Gaining of knowledge is good. You know, tabligh to the Muslims is good. However, all of them should be connected together as, as a process towards the main mission of the Muslim Ummah, which is to connect humanity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what I'm saying. And that's what we can find out from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It reminds me... Uh... Of a, a beautiful ayah in the Quran 
where Allah SWT in uh, Surah Al Imran, chapter 3 of the Quran, verse uh, Ayah 31, where Allah, this is the verbatim word of God Almighty Allah for the not yet Muslims who might be tuning in or might watch this, but where Allah is saying, Kul in kuntum tuhi buna Allah fattabiuni yuhbibukum Allah wa yakfirlukum dunubakum wallahu wa furu rahim. Say, if you love Allah, follow me. This is mean follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins, for Allah is often forgiving, most merciful. So the, the, the point here is, is just follow me, follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his way. And then if you look, what's his way? You know, and he clearly in another eye in the Quran, this is chapter 12, 108, Allah SWT is making that clear. It says, Say, this is my way. So this is the way that we're talking about. This is everything connecting it. This is the way. Say, this is my way. The, the way of Prophet Muhammad, Prophet of Jesus, all of them, you know, is I invite to Allah, to the creator of the heavens and the earth, on evidence clear as the seeing of one's own eyes, I and who follows me. So when you connect that, this is it. This is the essence. This is what you're talking about. Brother Eddie, um, if you look at from a dollar by dollar point of view, 90% of, of the resources of the Muslims, they go towards either relief or towards building of the masajis. So you are right in one way. You know, we have become a giant relief organization, the Muslim Ummah. We have, you know, just like Catholics have their Catholic charities, right? They're investing billions of dollars in there. We have become exactly the same thing. Muslim Ummah, our, we are supposed to be a dynamic, you know, dawah oriented, prophetic mission oriented organization, expansion of Islam all over the world. You know, in the first two centuries took place, people were going out as missionaries, right? No, no army reached Indonesia. However, by doing dawah, by their good ethical uh, social justice, by inviting people, connecting humanity, that's how Islam spread. So it's important when we look into, you know, where our money should be invested, our time is and the resources. This is what I can say full, with full, you know, uh, with full uh, confidence. The more dawah that we do, the less, the less of the other works that we need to do, inshallah. Let's uh, just take it even before you even go to that step. I mean, if you just look at, look at the uh, example of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, we can build from there, but just setting a framework where you had the Muslims, uh, the most persecuted people, driven out of their homes, tortured, you know, just the list goes on of all the injustices that were done. And now when they're coming towards trying to make the, the pilgrimage to the first house of worship built by Abraham to commemorate the worship of one and only one God, creator of heavens and earth, Allah. So from there, I, did, I believe it was around 1,400 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. So they got there, and then they weren't able to. They were. They had to. The, the treaty was signed, but you saw that what they were thinking was totally not in their favor. And then from there, they had to turn back. They couldn't go and complete the, um, the journey and the... So what happened from there, the IS came down talking about this was a clear victory. So how many years from there passed? And then what from there until the pagan Arabs, they ended up breaking the treaty. And then we know about the conquest of Mecca. So how many years now from that treaty of Hudaybiyah and then until Mecca was open and then you had 1400 number and then you had the the opening of Mecca coming in 10,000 plus strong. How many years was that? And what was going on in between those years? How much humanitarian work, relief work, et cetera, et cetera. And how much dawah was actually going on that the numbers jumped so much. And look, it wasn't through violence. It wasn't through the sword that they jumped up. How much? 10 plus fold. Look at that. 1,400 to 10,000. What was going on at that time? You want to add on that? Yes, uh, Brother Eddie, that's a good assessment of your, you know, of those initial years. 
when we look at those years, now the people, the non-Muslims, they got the opportunity with a clear mind now to come and interact with the Muslims, listen to the Quran, perhaps read the Quran. And they got invited by the Muslims and obviously the Prophet himself to ponder over who is the creator, what is the purpose of life, you know, what book, what guidance to follow and how that guidance is going to establish for them peace and content and establish better societies which are going to be just for all that there is a higher power, he will hold us accountable on the day of judgment. All of this education that they got to learn, they got the opportunity because of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Now with a clear mind, they're able to look into Islam. When they looked into Islam and they were invited by the Muslims, by the Prophet himself, that made it easy for them to embrace the faith of Islam. With their embracing the faith of Islam, all the other ills of the society now they were taken care of one by one because now they're connected to the creator. Once they're connected to the creator, they gave up, you know, intoxicants. Poverty was reduced. You know, all the ills, the injustices in the world at that time, they were reduced. So that means that's a primary example. More dawah that we do, the less of the relief work we need to do. More relief work that we need to do, more relief work that we have to do. Because now we are neglecting other important areas that we are supposed to be doing. Right? So all of these things are connected. So an important point that we can make is we can continue all of the things that you see on the chart over here. However, the amount of resources that we invest there in these areas compared to Dawa has to be reduced. The resources for Dawa has to be increased. Not because I say it, not because I'm coming from a Dawa perspective, I have a biased you know, view, or whether Eddie coming from the Dean show, no. Our frame of reference should not be our organization, should not be our culture, should not be our background and knowledge. It should be clearly defined from the Quran in the authentic Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So it's, it's not about obviously getting rid of any of these this is part of the deen. This is part of helping humanity to become better. I like what you said. The more we do dawah, now we get to the root of the matter. Like in this time, the Sahaba, people who were involved in many of the social ills, Islam came, the submission to the creator, not the creation, and now it helped people to give up many of these vices, connected them first to their creator. They developed that love, that deep love and reverence, they got to know who the creator was properly. Then the love naturally came in. And now they feared disobeying their creator. Their love was yearning for Jannah. Now they gave up alcohol. They gave up oppressing women. The women also started to observe many of the injunctions. And society started to become better. So you needed to, the less relief needed to go in towards alcoholism and all of the other things that are destroying society. So now, like you said, that's a very good point. You're not getting to the root of the matter, the root of the matter. So this is a very important point that people take home. It's just making sure that these resources are put in the right perspective. Because if you have all of this, for instance, the Islamophobia industry, the hate industry is able to capitalize on much of this because people's ignorance about Islam. But now if you had an efficient amount of resources to get out there to educate people, now they wouldn't be so naively caught and trapped and tricked by you know, the hate machine that's out there because they've been educated. You know, brother Eddie, one other way to look into this is, you know, we are we have more Muslims now than we ever had in the history of humanity. You know, 1.8 billion Muslims. We, are, we have more Hufas now in the world than we ever did in the history of humanity. We have more massages now than we ever did in the history of humanity. We have more educated people. Educated means, you know, PhD degrees, for example, right? bachelor's and associate's and master's degree than we ever did. We are more affluent now. I mean, look at the Middle Eastern states and whatnot than ever that we ever did. 
we are more resourceful now than we ever did. We are investing more into relief than we ever did. More relief organizations, more social justice organizations, right? More Muslims into politics now than ever before in the USA, at least. With all of these things combined, how come the problems of the Muslim Ummah are not going away? How come the problems of the world are not going away? Actually, they're increasing. So obviously we need to think and ponder, you know what, what does Allah desires from us? Should entering politics be the destination of the Muslim Ummah? Should relief work should be the destination of the Muslim Ummah? Or building the masajis, would that itself is the end of all? Would building Islamic schools, would that be the destination of the Muslim Ummah? Obviously not. All of these things are important, we should do it. But they will only benefit us humongously if we are going to connect all of them. Look at the arrows going back all the way here to connecting them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we are going to be doing relief work that we should be doing relief work, that relief work should be connecting with the recipients of relief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really important. For example, suppose if you are doing relief work, there can be a dawa table next to it. We should converse with the person, you know, what is Allah's guidance? You know, how we can be self-sufficient? How we are supposed to be helping humanity? Who was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? How he provided, you know, relief and social justice to the society? So even within the environment of the relief, we can still connect as the arrow shows over here. Connecting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we go to interfaith work, for example, some people who are just making it at their destination as interfaith. Interfaith itself is never the destination of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dawa was. Interfaith is to soften the hearts and the minds of people, to give them some education about Islam. But Dawa is the actual invitation to Islam, not just education. So if, I, if I'm going to have a mathematical equation for Dawa, brother Eddie, this is what I would say. Changing of the perceptions plus education plus invitation equals dawah. Not just information, not just changing of perception by doing relief work, social justice work, political work. All of these may change the perception, but changing the perception is not the end of all. Because they may say, you know what, when we give a dollar to a poor person, and non-Muslims may say, you know what, this Muslim organization is good. This Muslims are good. You know, atheists are good, they're helping out. Catholics are helping out. Then they say, you know what? Muslims are also good. But we don't want to glorify our organizations, our Muslims. That's not what Islam came for. We need to glorify. We need to connect people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason Islam came for. And, and everything. Look at it. Yes. Go ahead, Brother Eddie. Go ahead. What were you going to say to finish up your thought? No, no. So what I'm saying is that every single activity that we are doing, Ultimately, we have to not like in a subtle way, it may happen, not like that. Directly, we have to connect that activity to inviting humanity to Allah, connecting our fellow non-Muslim brothers and sisters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you hit home with this in the last couple of minutes, few minutes that we have, is just going back to the way. Look. Going back to the way, this is my way. I mean, if you just look at, like you said, go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, you go back and this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he did all of these things. But the way, the number one way, the way that we have, the number one resource that he put the time and effort and everything was connecting people to their creator. That was the number one. And everything from there to charity, the relief for all that stuff stemmed from there. Those were the branches. But the Eddie, some people may say, that you know what, relief work is indirectly dawa, right? They may say social let's justice let's is dawa. Let, let's finish up with that. It's a good point. Yes, yes. What we say and what is the prophetic example? Okay, so, so we have to define what does connecting humanity with Allah means. It can mean different things to different people. Giving a charity to a person may think, you know what, indirectly they may think I'm a good Muslim. They may start reading the Quran and they may become Muslim. That's not how it works. Yes, they may say that we are good people, good Muslims, when they see sisters wearing the hijab, giving charity work. However, connecting humanity with Allah means the four areas. First and foremost, we need to let our fellow non-Muslims know who is the creator and who is not the creator. 
that there is only one. He's not a trinity. He's not human. He's not Jesus, peace be upon him. He's not an idol. So that's one area of connecting humanity with Allah. Second connection that we should do, we should define for them that what is the purpose of life as the Quran says in Surah 51, Ayah 56. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah has only created the humans and the jinns that we should worship him. So that is the purpose of life and worshiping him in a comprehensive way, obviously. The, the third important way to connect humanity with Allah means that we should show our non-Muslims, our neighbors, our colleagues, our classmates, what is the study guide, the guidance that Allah has given to the previous prophets and now to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is the Quran itself. So we should let them know what the Quran is, distribute copies of the Quran, English, Spanish, different languages, actively let them know that Quran is their study guide. It's not the only, it, it came not only for Muslims or the Arabs, the Indian, Pakistani, Africans. No, Quran came also for them. It is the only study guide that is going to make their life better, peace and content, purpose, solutions. And the last important way, point that we need to make to connect humanity with Allah is, we should show them the clear path of salvation. That one day we all have to die. We have to face the creator. And to go into paradise by Allah's mercy, he is going to ask us, what faith have you followed? Did you worship only one God? No partners to him. Did you follow the last messenger and the books and the book that was sent to him? So doing good deeds and having the right faith is the only path for salvation. We have to clearly mention that to our non-Muslim neighbors and non-Muslim contacts. If we don't, we are not fulfilling the duty, the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Let me just quickly mention this example, Brother Eddie. 2012, I went for Hajj. Alhamdulillah, I completed my obligation of Hajj. Before I went there, a brother in Chicago, he took out, you know, $200 and he gave it to me. Sabil, brother Sabil, once you go there, identify people who are poor and needy and give that $200 to them, either to one person or a few people, he said. I put it in my pocket and I was always conscious that, so once I landed from the plane, my mind was, yes, there on Hajj, all the rituals and my family too who was with me, but my mind was also here. I was always identifying because now I have an amana to give. I have a responsibility to fulfill. So once I went for Hajj in there, landed on the plane up there, I was, I took out the dollars and I was thinking, you know, who should I give it to? Identified five people who I saw were poor. They were looking for help. And I took out the money and I gave it to them. Now I'm relaxed. Alhamdulillah, the responsibility that brother gave me, I fulfilled it, the amana, now I shared with that person in the same way. Islam is the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. All throughout our life, we have to identify the people. And who are those people? Every non-Muslim is a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the amana to distribute to them. If we don't, we'll be held responsible on the day of judgment. You know, Allah would be angry with us. May Allah protect us from their situation. Why did we just fall down to us? You know, why did we take it to us to the grave? No, distribute it to the poor people, distribute it to every non-Muslim, the message of Islam that Allah has given to us. Mm -hmm. Let's finish off with this. Some might say, well, it's not what you say, but it's your character. And let that just be the shining light. So no talk, just action. Keep it simple. All right. You know, this is a classical uh, way some people mention about just by deeds, not by our active invitation. Again, we have to go back to the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's been named as a Sadiq and al amin right? The most truthful and the most honest. He was the best, uh, most credible person in the whole society. When he asked the question, when he went to Mount Safa, asked the question, would you believe in me if I say there's an army behind the mountain? They said, yes, we believe you. He just did not stop up there just by people looking at him and coming to Islam. No, he actually used to run up to the people to educate them, to invite them to Islam. He used to invite them people on the meals, uh, lunch, dinner, his relatives. 
and let them know he, who he is and what Islam is. He went to city by city outside of Mecca. He used to dictate letters of invitation to the people of other, you know, the, the head of the states. He used to train the Muslims. So they used to go out and they used to convey the message in Yemen, in Medina, in different places. So he did not stop by just being a good person, by his good action, by giving charity. He actively used to educate them, very important, actively used to invite them to Islam. Allah is telling us to follow the prophetic example. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's beautiful. Let me just uh, add one more ayah in there. It's, uh, it relates to what we're talking about in Surah Baqarah, chapter 159, where Allah, God Almighty Allah is saying, those who conceal the clear signs that I have sent down and the guidance after I've made it clear for the people in the book, on them shall be Allah's curse and the curse of those entitled the curse. So this is a very scary thing. It's a very scary ayah that, you know, yeah, you can be having and you should by default have good noble character. And we're all works in progress. We're all human beings who make mistakes. You know, we get angry, we get uh, sad, we get, you know, we, we are not going to be perfect. So I think a lot of times this is just a cop out and people, you know, use that. But here in this ayah, you know, you can see it's very scary that, look, you have, like I like the beautiful example, you have an imana. So you have the dean, look, you have the information to it, and you're just going to go ahead and bank on them coming to Islam because of your character. I think that's just a cop-out. You know, yes, have good character, good manners, ethics. That's no doubt about it. You have to strive. That's just mm -hmm. something that's ongoing. But at the same time, you have to open your wife and give the direction. It's on, and and then it's on Allah SWT to guide the hearts, but at least convey the message and convey the imana, the trust that's been given to you. And I think that we've uh, those four points you gave are very important. One, who is the creator? Two, the definition of the purpose of life. Three, uh, showing, guiding people to the guidance, to look into the Quran. And also four, the clear solution to salvation, uh, which is in this deen. So uh, I think we uh, got the uh, message out, Dr. Sabil. Thank you very much. Anything sure, else you want to you end with? Yeah, you know, there is a, there is a question which, uh, or there is an observation which is here. Don't you think it's important, you know, Walaikum Asalaam wa rahmatullah. Don't you think it's important for now, important to practically help our Palestinian brothers and sisters because nobody is doing anything for them. What is the Muslim Ummah can do? We pray. We, we we urge our Muslim governments, inshallah, Muslim scholars to stand up, be firm, be confident in calling out and helping them out in there. So obviously, based upon the changing situation, we keep on dedicating certain resources, more resources to certain situations, like Palestinian brothers and sisters for now, for example, right? But you have to look at the overall perspective. The overall perspective always has to be, there has to be one destination, one direction, one mission that we have to align towards. That mission is to invite humanity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And within that mission, all of these things are connected, right? Social justice, as we mentioned over here, it is connected to exactly the social justice causes, not just in the USA, but around the, around the world. But that itself is not the mission. Establishing the Islamic, uh, the Palestinian state is not the mission of the Muslim Ummah. Yes, that is a wish and hope and we should work towards it. But the mission of the Muslim Ummah is something greater, something higher that aligns with the prophetic mission. And the mission of all the prophets, which is to invite humanity and connect humanity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that saying, obviously, we, we hope and pray that the situation of the Muslims in Palestine, not just in Palestine, obviously, right? But Palestine, also in China, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Africa. We pray we should invest in it, do, do donate to that causes. However, however important, the clarity of the mission has to be there. And that's what we are saying. We are not taking away from all the excellent work that every single person is doing. Organizations are doing and the massages are doing. Let's continue that. But... There has to be a mission, a direction, a destination that all of these different causes should align towards. Once we align all the causes, all of these other difficulties, the challenges the Muslims are going through, they will take care of it themselves, inshallah. The way that they have taken care in the time of the Prophet all throughout history with Allah's help.
that's what we are saying. Beautiful. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Dr. Sabil, for helping us cover this very important topic. You're welcome, Brother Eddie. This was a very much needed one. And obviously, if anyone with the questions and comments, they can reach out to us. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite the Muslim Ummah. Amen. And we pray to Allah that he helps us to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we pray to Allah that he gives us the courage and the confidence and the knowledge and the ease so we can fulfill that mission that Allah has given to us. So Amen. all of us together as United Muslim Ummah, we have to show to humanity, Muslims are not a threat. We are actually a blessings to humanity. And may Allah makes us ambassadors of Islam, ambassadors of peace to mankind. Ameen. Ameen. All right, brother. Jazakallah khairan. Ameen. We are. Anakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.